Hi, y'all. I'm going to do Proverbs today. I'll go back to Daniel later. I'm using a study Bible with Daniel at some of the imagery as Daniel gets into his vision. So I'm going to tell you about wisdom some more. Solomon was considered the most wise person in the world ever because he asked God for wisdom. When God asked him what he would want him to grant him, instead of asking for the endless wealth that he was blessed with, he was also the richest person to ever live wealth-wise, um, he said, I need the wisdom to govern your people, basically. So God grant him, granted him this, and he also was granted those riches as well. So he wrote down a lot of this wisdom. And in Proverbs, we see it. So in chapter 3 of Proverbs, he says, My son, do not forget my teaching. For let your heart keep my commandments and tranquility and prosperity, the wholeness of life's blessings. That's what prosperity means, not just having a bunch of money. They will add to you. Do not let mercy and kindness and truth leave you. Instead, let these qualities define you. Bind them securely around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord within all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him. And he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles from blocking your way. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord with reverent awe and obedience and turn entirely away from evil. It will be health to your body your marrow, your nerves, your sinews, your muscles, all your inner parts, and refreshment, physical well-being to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your crops. Now, that means income because not of us all, all of us grow crops. Then your barns will be abundantly filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not reject or take lightly the discipline of the Lord. Learn from your mistakes and testing that comes th from his correction through discipline. Nor despise his rebuke. For those whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. So a responsible parent corrects their children. When, you know, as they're growing up, teaching them right from wrong not letting them run amok and crazy and do whatever and get into everything and mess with people's stuff. When I was little, if we messed with anything we weren't supposed to, we got a slap on the hand. So we just didn't mess with other people's stuff or, you know, stuff that we weren't supposed to mess with at home. Like stuff on the shelves that were knickknacks, for instance. You don't mess with that. That's not yours. That's not your toys. So you learn as an adult not to do the same thing. You know, if you're brought up to not do certain things. So just like that, God loves us and he corrects us when we get out of line. Now, if we choose to listen and, can, and realize that that is our choice, some people just keep barreling down the, the wrong path. Even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. Happy, blessed, considered, fortunate to be admired is the man who finds skillful and godly wisdom. This is the amplified version. They have in brackets, the meaning behind the Greek word that was used to translate some of this. That's why there's a lot of description in here. And the man who gains understanding and insight, learning from God's word and life's experiences. For wisdom's profit is better than profit of silver, and her gain is better than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and nothing you can wish for compares with her in value. Long life is her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are highways of pleasantness and favor, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy, blessed, considered, fortunate to be admired is everyone who holds her tightly. The Lord, by his wisdom, has founded the earth. By his understanding, he has established the heavens. 
By his knowledge, the deeps were broken up, that's the oceans, and the clouds dripped with dew. My son, let them not escape from your sight, but keep sound wisdom and discretion, and they will be your life to your soul, your inner self, and a gracious adornment to your neck, your outer self. Then you will walk on your way of life securely, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you die, lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden fear, nor of the storm of the wicked when it comes, since you will be blameless. For the Lord will be your confidence, firm and strong, and will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, its rightful recipients, when it is in your power to do it. That is, you know. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back, and tomorrow I'll give you it, when you have it with you already. Do not devise evil against your neighbor who lives securely beside you. Do not quarrel with a man without cause. If he has done you no harm, do not envy a man of violence. Do not choose his ways for the devious or repulsive to the Lord. But his private counsel is with the upright, those with spiritual integrity and moral courage. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the just and righteous. Though he scoffs at the scoffers and scorns at the scorners, yet he gives grace, his undeserved favor, to the humble, those who give up self-importance. The wise will inherit an honor and glory, but dishonor and shame is conferred on fools. This is some really good stuff here. In 327, where it says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, it's right for recipients. This says, using this verse as proof, a proof text, the ancient rabbis offered the example of an employer who tells his foreman to hire workers at four small silver coins, each to do a job, and the foreman hires them at three instead. Even though they accepted the terms, the rabbis ruled that they have the right to complain. Compare this with the parable of the landowner who hires workers for a denarius each. Day, each. The difference here is that the first group receives a fair wage, while the last is overpaid as a matter of generosity. So this is, these are basically how to live a good and honest life. And all through Proverbs, we have that kind of stuff. And it's really great. Great for anybody, even if if you are not really a believer in the gospel, or you don't believe Jesus is the only way. Just reading the proverbs tells you a lot about how to conduct your life in general. So, I'm earlier than usual. Y'all have a great day.